Hi, my name is Mindy, and this is my 2003 Honda Element that I've fondly named the ninth element, hence the name for my channel. Today we're going to do a tour of it, inside and out, but let's start with the exterior. You might notice that the vehicle is no longer stock. I put a two inch lift on it with Falcon Wild Peaks. I also added Swift Springs and a stiffer suspension so that the load that I have on board now is not going to wreck the suspension. The tires are Falcon Wild Peaks and the wheels are Black Rhino. The suspension is by Swift in the back and it's a Honda suspension in the front, the springs, and there is a two inch lift. I also put a uh, Rhino Raptor on the doors, which is a truck bed liner. This way it protects my vehicle in the bush from getting scratches on it. And the doors were getting really scratched. And so this is the best solution for that. So I don't have to keep repainting them. Cascadia Vehicle Tents has sponsored me on the channel with an awning. So this is an amazing awning. When it's out, it makes it a Honda video. Let's take a look inside now. One of my favorite features about the Honda Element are the suicide doors. I mean, look at this view and the airflow. It's so amazing in the summer with places like this. One of the things that I love about my Honda Element is a modification that I did to it this summer. It's a swivel seat. These swivel seats are made in Bellevue, Washington by Heroes Hot Rod. Shout out to Austin, thanks a lot. So this is what I mean by a swivel if you don't know. What I do is there's a latch underneath here that I turn and I could actually sit on the seat this way and look out at a view. But what my preferred position is, is to put it like this, bring it forward a little bit, put it in recline. And then I have myself a recliner in the Honda Element. I like to sit here and maybe watch a little YouTube with the laptop up in the bed. Sometimes I put the laptop on my lap and I might edit a video. Or sometimes I might just sit here and read a book or look out my window. Currently, I live in my Honda Element full time. This year I did sell my house and I moved into it. This is 35 square feet. So I'm gonna take you in from the front door. So this is my little sort of organizer for you know my morning routine, getting ready, or my nighttime routine. So you know, toothbrush, water, headband, glasses, things like that. Just things that I use all the time. On a regular basis, I keep them fit here. Shoes for getting in and out quickly. And then I move on to I hang up my jackets, just like you would in a hall closet. And then we have, we'll move on to the, everybody wonders, the toilet. So this is a toilet, come coffee table, come side table. Come um, footrest, come toilet. <laughs> we have the ladies room for number one and the ladies room for number two. Yes, I poop in a bag. It's glamorous. In van life, you can still have beautiful furniture. I have vaulted furniture in my car with, check this out, little tiny drawers for all my things that are soft closing and they stay shut throughout travel. So I'm not gonna show you all of my drawers. I'll show you this one. And one way that I like to organize my things in my drawers is these Cotopaxi packing cubes. I'm able to get, you know, about 10 t-shirts in one, and then I'm about to get 10 pairs of pants in the pant drawer. Next is my bed. Now, I kind of feel like I did mess up on this part a little bit, but gosh, it's so comfy. I currently have two RV foam mattresses and then a lot of blankets because we're getting into winter and it's actually not too bad to get in and out of it so it's very comfortable. I am five foot six and my mattress is 67 inches long. I cut it to fit me exactly and it fits perfect and I just love it and it's so warm and cozy in the winter. A lot of people wonder like how do I stay warm in van life and stuff like that. I turn my car on and I turn the heater on. That's all I need. But this year I'm not gonna have to worry about cold and you'll have to watch the channel for that and all of the adventures that are coming. For cool, 
same thing. I try to be in the shade. I've got fans and I like to camp at lakes or in higher elevation when it's hot out. So some of you might be wondering like, wow, Mindy, this is not enough space or storage for clothing. Well, that's okay. Come around to the other side of the car and let me show you the rest of my storage. I do live and travel through four seasons normally when I car camp, but now I'm living in the car full time. So I made sure that I had extra storage. So I have this very big, deep, long drawer to hold linens and winter gear and other things like that, medicine or whatever. I also have a drawer that I call my snack attack drawer. So it holds all my healthy snacks and things for when I'm on the road. And then I have this last drawer that I used to hold like my cables for my batteries and things like that, and bungee cords and bigger things. There's also storage underneath in here. I left this open because I still wanna get a different battery system later on, but I'm, I'm upgrading as I go. But I also can put my water down here, which I keep all my water in stainless steel bottles so that it doesn't get the funny, funky plastic taste with the different changes of temperature. And I also know they're never gonna leak and they're just safe that way. So if you're wondering how I cook, come with me to my kitchen. I love this part of the build the most. I think this is where all the magic is. My previous career was I was a chef and so I didn't want to compromise in van life. So I made sure that I had the best kitchen ever. And there's my stove. I have all the utensils that you would need for van life. I have all the spices. I have dishes. I have cups and I have pots and I have pans. Everything, everything that I need. This drawer is convertible. So the front of it, I have like morning coffee stuff. In the middle of the drawer, I have canned goods and dried goods. And in the back of the drawer, I have like uh, tools, butane, and recovery gear. I made it so that I can convert the drawer to be different sizes by taking these inserts out, or I can just keep it the way it is from stuff sliding around. When traveling, I have these special locks for these drawers that they use an RV so they just slide into the holes and that way these drawers aren't banging around on my back gate. So if you're wondering how I do my dishes, I don't have any fancy plumbing. <laughs> I just pump up this bottle and wash away. <laughs> This is not a toilet. This is my fridge. Thank you, Bouge RV. This is a 30 quart fridge that's working 12 volts off of my Blue Eddy 700 watt battery here that's powered by a 100 watt energy panel on my roof. I have two batteries on board. Now my electrical system is still not perfect. I feel like I need a 1000 watt battery. I will eventually upgrade up to that. But for now, I have a Blue Eddy 700 watt battery. Thank you, Blue Eddy. It's working great to run the fridge, but it still is more like for a weekend warrior, like three to five days. If I have continuous sun, it's not a problem, but I live in the Northwest, so we do experience times where if it's a summer, I need to be in the shade, then I can't charge the panel. Or if it's in the winter, I don't have as much sun. I also have a Watt Fun 500 watt battery here. I use that one to charge my Chromebook and my phones. I really want to give a huge shout out to Jeff from Element Driven. He installed this interior latch for me to open my door from the inside. So when I'm inside the car, I just pull on this lever right here and the door is able to open up from the inside because normally you can't do that in Honda Elements. This strap here so that when, I, when I'm inside, I'll be able to pull down on it and close the door. My window coverings are by Heat Shields. They're out of Bellevue, Washington. You can order your heat shields for your vehicle online from heatshields.com. But these are fabulous because they are 
you put the year, make, and model of your car into their website, they cut the heat shields to fit your car. Then you have these little suction cups here to put them up into the windows. Just like that. And my light is from Bare Bones. There's two settings on it, low and bright. It's charged USB, so this is the light that lights up my kitchen at nighttime. I installed this 100 watt Renergy panel to my roof, and as you can see, the cables are over there. I've taped them as neatly as I could to run down the channel of the car, which is this channel right here, and into the moon roof. Do I think this is enough solar? Absolutely. I'm not charging a lot of, a lot of batteries right now. When I upgrade, I don't know. But I, right now, I feel like this, this solar panel has been amazing, keeping my batteries topped off. I did struggle before when I was trying to use the portable um, solar panels because I always struggle with where to put them out. I also killed one because it flew off my roof because I left it up there and forgot it and it was run over by a truck. So this one is taped on real well. It's uh, with a special 3M tape. I'll leave links for all the products in my car in the descriptions down below but I love it. One of the first things I did was I put this Hyperax roof rack up here so that I could store my spare tire because the build that I put inside covers the compartment for the spare tire. I want to thank Isaac from A Bus Life Story. He's behind the camera right now, guys, and he's going to interview me about my build. Mindy, so a lot of people out there who don't know you like they would be they're watching this tour like oh this is such a sweet rig oh she's moved in this tiny little honda element a lot of the questions a lot of folks might be wondering is how did you end up here <laughs> you know did you get kicked out of somewhere <laughs> like how'd you how'd you get here no i uh well i've always dreamt of continuous travel and you know when i could retire and do it but retirement you know nowadays is really far off in the future and so I was fortunate enough to own a piece of property and this past year the market went crazy and so that was kind of my get out ticket. So I sold my house and at the same time while I was selling the house I was putting the camper in here and it was being built by Fred. Shout out to Fred, my cabinet maker. I'll leave his information down below. And so at the same time the build was going into the Honda Element and I was selling my house and the market is too crazy to repurchase anything else so I was like, Anne, I'm not interested in going back indoors again. Like I am having such a good time traveling out of it and seeing things and just living my best life and being healthy that I'm gonna do this until I can't stand it. A lot of people wonder how folks like you are making a living on the road. Do you care to share? I do and how I'm making my living is from my YouTube channel. And so when you watch these videos, I get paid and that's what puts gas in my tank and food in my belly so I can travel down the road. Van life is a very, I would say, younger person, 30s kind of a, a trip right now, right? It's gotten really trendy over the years. There are, you know, a little bit older folks go, jumping into this, mm -hmm. but not very many. No. You are the minority. Yeah. So I know for a fact there's, peop there's older folks out there who are trapped in whatever they're trapped in. Yeah. And is there anything, like, you have the experience that you would say to that person watching this who's just scouring YouTube looking for inspiration? Absolutely. Um, I actually kind of terrified my old group of friends by the decisions that I made because, you know, getting rid of my house, so no longer having a house, I left my career and I moved into basically an SUV. I'm not going to try and glamorize it and say, oh, this is the greatest thing ever and you should do it too. Because there are struggles, but it's a mind over matter thing. And it's like, I would rather have the freedom to travel and see things while I'm able body and I'm healthy and get healthy. I can always go back to work. But if I get old and I lose my body and my ability, I can't get that back to go out and play. So I'm kind of doing it a little bit in the reverse. Uh, but I think the biggest thing is just planning and then not you know spending a hundred thousand dollars on a rig like maybe try it out in the car that you have right now go for a weekend go for a month go for the day you know take things that you have inside your house put them in your car and just like when you were a little kid building a fort 
build a little build a little nest, build a little camper in your car with what you have right now and see how much you like it and then move on from there. And I bet you you'll love it. The road heals, my friends. I want to thank you guys for watching today. And again, my name is Mindy. This is my 2003 Honda Element. It's currently October 18th right now when I'm filming this, so it's going to be a later date when you see it. And I'm going to be somewhere south. And I want you to follow my adventures these next six months. We are overlanding now, baby. <laughs> I am not going to camp down there. Uh, even though the car's lifted and I have the new suspension and wheels, it feels like if I stop, I'm gonna get stuck. So I'm gonna stay up here and uh, just enjoy this. Sorry about the wind.